Hey y'all, be reacting to Future Folk Tales Episode 2. And just so y'all know, I'm still in my reaction from the minute and 31 second mark. And I'll start my reaction in one, zero, go. Hmm. It's pretty cool to get a grasp of the advancements of their tech, actually. Although that's the thing that I'm just wondering, why do they have to recap her sp name specifically though? We already knew her name <laughs> from the previous episode. Kind of feels like a forced exposition dump there. But I do like the interaction between her and her friend though. Hmm. It's actually pretty cool. This. I mean, she's gonna have to just do it the old fashioned way. <laughs> Maybe she could look up something on the. on the computer or something. Whoa. This. <laughs> She's gonna have to be patient. Okay, but now that's gonna gnaw on the mind of the mother, though. <laughs> Whoa! Actually, I actually like that. Actually, seeing more of her characters interact with other characters is nice. Okay, this is adorable. Aww. I mean, she should at least try to buy something and explain it to her friend Moody, though. Ah, she should have at least got something else, though. That would have been the best choice. Hopefully it's a story of how to make cinnamon rolls. <laughs> cinnamon buns for her. For her sake. Well, yeah, maybe it'll actually be something that will help her on a current situation with Moody. Favorite phase, phrase. Hmm. I can just feel the edge radiating from the man's soul. <laughs> oh, who knows? Him? I like how she's just uh, smiling at the tears of that little girl. I'm <laughs> fucked up. Check in the background. Oh. Alright. Actually, nice. Nice way of looking at it there. An honest little. And it brings into perspective life too when if you don't succeed in something, it could potentially have positive ramifications. Oh. Yeah, he's gonna feel the honest gluteus maximus for quite a few hours. <laughs> How was that for 
fucking the best. I understand the ants eating the cookies, but... Okay. I mean, I guess that's a somewhat positive way of looking at things. That it couldn't have been worse. I guess don't have to look at the at the glass half full instead of looking at half empty. Although I could see why he would misunderstand that. Honestly, it's not like Fado's done anything wrong, though. Fado, the only thing he does is spit out facts. Nothing wrong with fat spitting. Fat spitting. Fat spitting, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, at least he's finally someone's talking positively about him. Huh? Oh, that explains why her words hold a lot of weight. Aw, that's sweet. I mean, as long as Fidel also does his job properly, too, then it's all good. Half when someone's gonna conspire against Fidel to make him lose his positive image. Yeah. Yeah, I had a feeling we were gonna get cons conspired in this specific episode. I mean, wouldn't blame him when someone close to you is betraying you that much. It would make anyone take pause. Actually, I liked it. One of the few instances where it actually explains and words out the whole thing. Oh. God, talk about things getting dark pretty quick. Not much in the comparison of an individual's wife. <laughs> okay, yeah, that could actually be taken up to interpretation. And they're going to probably put it in Fidel's house. I have a feeling. Just to pin the blame on him. That's what's exactly going to happen. Yep. It's going to be in Fidel's quarters. Yeah. Oh, it's just a, tr it's just a physical trinket, though. Don't say it's for the best. Please don't. Please. <laughs> I want you to live, damn it. Don't say it. No! Oh, you gotta be joking. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. He's gonna incriminate himself, potentially. <laughs> yeah, that may be the case, but... <gasps> <laughs> yeah. If he was there to oh, he's just gonna see the Fidel's ass. Oh.
Yo, you know, Fidel's badass just to still be in that situation like a boss. Yeah, I was even thinking at that moment that would probably be was the worst thing for him to say. You know, that looks pretty badass though. I like that mustache. Hmm. Oh. Okay. One of the few instances where I don't mind a bad animation because I don't think I would have been comfortable seeing a kid just get smacked in the face with the horse. They're just enough to imply he got hit in the face. So I actually like that sense of um, storyboarding and direction there. That explains where I got his catchphrase. Oh, well, that's probably the start of where he got his catchphrase. Oh. Okay. Oh, my. True, and, or even if he would have survived, he would have been completely traumatized. Oh, so that's where he got it. Well, yeah, I'd say a good portion of them. Not all of them, but a good portion of them do have some positives from them. Hmm. You know, that's even a positive message that can be taken. And that can also be like taken in today's climate too. Mm. You know, I'm big in this track. Oh man, I hope that guy gets arrested for blaming our man Fidel. Man. That dirty, dirty, dirty man. Soon gonna be caught by justice. Yeah, this feels like a trap. Yeah, I definitely know it's gonna be a trap. Should have believed Fidel. Okay, now that's going way too far. Whoa! Okay, then actually, him actually ch ch challenging his own moral code is pretty, pretty interesting. Okay, Nazir. <laughs> oh, man, he's a man. 
With guts. He's gonna do it though. <laughs> Father. Oh my. I like that bit of character moment though. Because he wasn't so entwined with those words at the start, but then seeing all the circumstances that are occurring now, he's living by those words too, just like his father did. That's some nice character progression. And honestly, I like it too how they actually showed Anima actually stick up for Fidel. So this actually makes it kind of tense because, at least for me, I actually care a little bit about Anima too for the small amount of times he was shown. It's actually pretty cool. Okay. And gotta say, the Omnil's brave for, for actually um, wanting to risk herself in this situation, too. Oh! Whoa! <laughs> okay, I love that intensity. Okay. Smart. Oh, okay. <laughs> Quick thinking, so I'm assuming he's gonna light up a match or a torch or something to burn that man's boat right before the exchange. Whoa! Or oh, never mind. Whoa! <laughs> Hopefully, as the trap activates. Oh, <laughs> okay, then I didn't expect that. Okay, I think now he's gonna activate the torch. I'm assuming that's why he let the oil just fall. Yeah, these suckers! <laughs> he won't be laughing. That evil man won't be laughing anymore. Ah, karma's a bitch. <laughs> I would have loved to have heard screaming, but hey, just seeing the boat burn down. I'll make actually makes me happy. Okay, so they got out. All right. At least they're in jail, though. I don't think it's his fault, though. <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna for sure dissuade him from saying that. His daughter. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, actually.
actually, well, that would actually be pretty fitting. Yes! Hey, he earned it. <laughs> he should. <laughs> yeah, he's earned it. <laughs> oh, I like that. Dial along there. Nice ending. And I love the carpets too in the animation. Hmm. Alright, now Seer was and Fidel were pretty darn cool. I actually hope we get to see um her interact with Moody though. Our main girl. I mean, there is, I don't know the equivalent, but there's gonna be an equivalent of YouTube there to use. Alright, good, good. They're not gonna be using a cheat code device. They're actually doing it legitimately. This is, this is cool. It was look pretty good actually. Damn, I'm hungry now. <laughs> Damn, I'm gonna have to look at the recipe on how to make those cinnamon rolls eventually. Oh, <laughs> I guess they must have also been made by the power of love. That's probably why they taste pretty good. Oh yeah, it feels great. Oh, okay, I like how she leaves that line. Okay. I actually like this more than the first episode by by just a bit though. I'd say on the scale of like one to ten, with one being abysmal, ten being exceptional, five being average. I thought this was a solid seven point two five out of ten episode because I love the story in the first episode, but what kind of dropped the first episode a little bit was like the, like when they were just doing forced explanations about the tech in their setting, where it kind of felt like an exposition dump instead of natural dialogue. Here they didn't have that issue, and you only had that forced exposition once when Maha mentioned her name again, because I'm like, we already knew your name from like the first episode, at least I remember it. <laughs> And then they mentioned it quite a few times in this episode specifically, too. So it's like you didn't need the exposition dump from the very get-go. So um, that's the reason why... That's the reason why I like this episode a bit more. Although when it comes to like the story itself with Fidel versus Sarangs, I actually liked both of the stories equally. But when it comes to like the non-story portions, I like... I like this second episode's version more. It was like more competently done. And since the animation wasn't didn't have competent ambitions like the first episode, any animation flaws, they were not visually apparent. So that's another thing I gotta I gotta look at too. And that is why I rate this specific episode higher than the first one. And I thought it was above average. And I'll definitely be reacting to the third episode because I'm actually yeah, I've actually been really digging what this what the series has been doing recently. So, anyways, and I also love the character development with Nasir too, where he took up the phrase of "perhaps it's for the best." I really love that and all that. So, anyways, y'all, these are my thoughts on the episode. Be sure to comment on your thoughts on how you feel about Maraksha in the comment section below. Rate the bit, share it, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later if you come back for more. Alright y'all, be sure to share, comment, subscribe, and have a great and safe day. Bye bye.